Let me for a moment turn now to a couple of public policy leaders. Um, maybe first, if I may turn to uh, the minister from Denmark. Um, it is clearly a country, Minister Jensen, as Minister of Foreign Affairs, that has set the pace in terms of an energy market, in terms of pricing of energy and also of fuels. Can you offer us um, a couple of minutes' worth of reflection on the experience of Denmark? Well, thank you. I'll be pleased to do that. And may I say, both as Minister of Foreign Affairs and former Minister for re re with Responsibility of Taxation, I've been working with the pricing of carbon for many years and how to do this right. And, and just first of all, uh, on one hand, it's rather impressive to see all the companies coming here pledging for responsibility. But perhaps the provoking question is, why are we pleased that you're responsible? Why aren't you just naturally being responsible? Why are we so happy when companies and countries are pledging to do the right thing? And the, the reason is that the price on carbon pollution is not set right. We are trying to do that in Denmark, first by taking the uh, Kyoto Protocol and the quota system, bringing them into the EU and the uh, emission trading uh, scheme, and uh, also uh, nationally wide in Denmark by uh, implementing a Danish uh, carbon tax, uh, trying to set the price right. But doing that alone means that Danish companies are getting a uh, extra burden on their backs. And therefore, there's a limit to how much we can do. We need to take your experiences, your insight, and bring them into a political agenda to push for a worldwide, or at least for a almost worldwide, uh, agreement on how to price the t carbon tax uh, correctly. I would prefer it to have a quota system where politicians, as Bob said, could set the speed and the, the limit for the carbon emission and then let the businesses compete for bringing up the, the best technology, the best solution to do that. But we need a push for this. All these companies sitting here being responsible, could you please help me give that push to the politicians in the assembly and elsewhere to do the right thing, to tighten up the EU trading scheme, to, to make sure that there are no loopholes, that there are no losses, that we get the right price, and to make the right conditions for you to continue to do the right thing. I'm certain that the consumers, in the end, will support you, and they will also be there for you when you do the right thing. But right now, to make the pace faster, we also need political actions, and political, as you said, are also worried about the price on the uh, uh, gas, gas stations and on the electors, but they need support of business cycles to do it. I think we have all the right tools. We need to put them into place and we need to have the right agenda. Denmark has, for the last two decades, have a 40% growth in our wealth with no growth in energy consumption and a lowering of our carbon emission. It is doable and it is good business, so let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister Jensen. And perhaps one of the questions taken also from Mr. Puyuman just now, does carbon pricing always mean the consumer ends up paying more or is it a matter of pricing the consumption of fossil fuels or of carbon intense energy sources and looking at a fiscally neutral outcome for the consumer. There are examples where subsidies have been reduced, fossil fuel subsidies, which clearly increase the price to the consumer, but rebate systems are put in place in order to send the price signal but not punish the person's money in the wallet. So